皆さんこんにちは。So lately I've been reading Anthony Cummins' book The Ultimate Art of War, which is a illustrated guide to the art of war, that famous book by the、uh, Chinese strategist Sun Tzu, which was written、uh, in the 5th century. Now that book's quite interesting to me, although I've never read it, I could probably quote it anecdotally. The book was quite interesting to me because I actually have a military background and now I work here in Japan in the Matsumoto Castle Gun Corps. So I thought I'd put together my top five teachings from that book. Um, if war is unavoidable, the first teaching in that book is don't go to war if you don't have to, which of course is the most important. But should war be inevitable? I got to myself, thought to myself, what would be my top five strategic or tactical doctrines from that book? The first teaching I selected was to establish clear communications, and that can happen before actually joining battle. It's really important one because for a commander to be able to respond effectively to The rapidly changing situation that a battlefield inevitably becomes, he needs to have good communications. And I would say communications doesn't just extend to the sending and receiving of messages, but communications also involves that communication line, that, that supply line of being able to reinforce and re equip your troops and to send back wounded and injured personnel. Next, I chose use strength as a deterrent, because if they don't want to go to war with you, you won't need to go to war with them. Right then, this is、uh, Matsumoto Castle, the home of the Matsumoto Castle Gun Corps, of course, they share the same name. And it's a good example of how warfare progressed during the feudal era. It's got over 150 firing windows, it's got a hidden floor to store ammunition and、uh, weapons, it's got its own arsenal. And it was really designed with gunnery in mind, it was designed to keep people out, and it was a very, very tough nut to crack. So, as a defensive doctrine, it can be very, very useful. When you're trying to defend somewhere, building a castle or a pre prepared position can be one of your best options. So, talking about other defensive structures, I mean things like this behind me here. Again, you can see there's lots of firing windows. And this goes into a courtyard, so if you actually manage to scale the walls and get past the moat and the bridge and through the gates, you'd be trapped in that courtyard. And again, people would be shooting down into you, throwing hot, horrible things, or using their arrows. And you'd be trapped in there, it'd be, be tough, it'd certainly be an objective, but once you took that objective, moving on to the next one, well, that would be really tough. I'll just illustrate what I mean about being trapped inside a courtyard. We're stepping through an area called Taikomon right now, which is part of the defensive structure of Matsumoto Castle. If you got through this large gate, which I've just literally stepped through there, you'd be trapped in this courtyard. You can see those firing windows. For people to shoot out, and they would retreat into this gate we just stepped through. And looking above, people would shoot down into you, throw things, drop things. Very, very difficult structure to attack. I mean, castles, of course, are difficult structures to attack, but this one was very modern for its time in 1593. It was built with guns in mind. I mean, guns had not arrived that soon,、uh, that recently. They were only 50 years old. But people were developing war tactics around it already. They were grasping hold of that new technology in order to get an advantage over their enemies and to create、uh, their provinces and make them too difficult to attack. Next, I chose to make use of spies, scouts, and guides. And that's really going to be important whether you're fighting a defensive action or an offensive action. Well, a wiser man than me said that、uh, time spent in reconnaissance is never wasted. And I think that's a really, really accurate observation. And we're not just talking about reconnaissance of the enemy forces. You also have to、um, reconnoitre the terrain. You need to know what kind of forces you can move over that terrain. Is it too soft for tanks? Is it too soft for horses? Is it covered in stones? Is it going to cause damage to equipment as you move across it? So you need to really, really, really take care with your forces. And that's where your reconnaissance element comes in. That's why so many military forces. Spend a lot of time and a lot of money training and equipping special forces generally in order to conduct very risky reconnaissance operations. But having said that, if you've got reconnaissance forces, you can bet that the enemy also have reconnaissance forces and you have to look out for them. Next, I chose to cross dangerous terrain as quickly as possible. Now, if your reconnaissance forces have done their job properly, they've not only found out where the enemy are, they've found out how to get to them. Where's the best way? Where are the alternatives? And how can you get back out?
course, modern warfare has a lot of assets available to it. You can jump into a helicopter, you can use a boat, but if those options aren't available, how are you going to cross that terrain with haste? How are you going to make your assault? Or how are you going to get back out? During the Warring States era in Japan, it was either done on foot or on horseback. And if there wasn't a road, well, you might have to make a road. An old Takeda supply route that was built during the Warring States era in order to facilitate uh, Takeda Shingen's uh, progress into Shinano province. It was built uh, in order to make it a little easier for them to move their cavalry into the province. Of course, Japan being very mountainous, progress over this sort of terrain can be very, very difficult. So if you want to try and do it as quickly as possible. And so here we are on the road, there's the wife behind, just driving, uh, just having a look around and seeing what we can, um, what we can find. And finally, I chose to gain the loyalty of the troops under your command. I think that's really important because if you don't have a core of troops that are willing to work for you in the most arduous, most difficult of conditions, then you're really going to struggle to maintain an effective uh, fighting force. So what do I think is the most important part, the most important aspect? Well, look after the troops, look after the guys, make them want to work for you, make them want to fight. If they've got good morale, they'll certainly put up with a lot before they falter. They won't mind the harsh training if they win the good battles. And if they're rewarded for what they do, if they're rewarded for their service and they're shown that they're valued, then you have a much, much, much stronger army. And that's what I think is the most important part of um, controlling and managing your army. So that's my top five. Thanks to Anthony for letting me have a copy of his book. Um, if you're interested in the matchlock history, the firearms history of Samurai Japan, Feudal Japan, then you can check out my channel, which is Gun Samurai. I hope to see you there.